You know, when I went through camps, I was taught what occlusal stability meant. And occlusal stability was always defined on your patient being in centric relation. So, and they said, if your patient isn't in centric relation, then you cannot have occlusal stability. Like, really weird. Is that true? Let's do something here, okay? If you've done this before, humor me and take part. And if you haven't done it before, this is gonna be fun. You ready? Everybody sit up straight. Totally sit up straight. And what I want you to do is I want you to put your heads back as far as you can comfortably. And what I want you to do is I want you to slowly close until you feel your first tooth touch. So sit back, slowly close until you feel your first tooth touch. Then, after you do that, I want you to squeeze. When you've done, you can look forward. Awesome. Who here felt the exact same position with their head back as they did after they squeezed? Who here felt all their teeth touch at one point in time? Raise your hand. Anybody? Bueller. Anybody? <laughs> Nobody. Usually there's one person in the room, maybe two. So all of you felt a slide? Is that true? Okay. With your heads back and you felt that initial contact, that initial contact is centric occlusion. Okay? That is your tooth or teeth positions while your condyles are in centric relation. Centric occlusion is the tooth position when your condyles are in centric relation. Why is this the most misused term? Because so many dentists say, I'm just going to do that case in CO. I'm just going to treat it in CO, right? I hear people say that all the time on Dental Town. I'm just going to treat it in CO. Well, technically speaking, if you're going to treat a case in CO, you kind of are treating the case in CR. And what they're really referring to is, I'm going to treat the teeth in MI, which that's the position after you squeezed, okay? So now, give me two seconds, hear me out. I went to an occlusion course, five of them. The whole camp was based upon telling you your patients are all occlusally unstable if that initial point and that final point were not the same. So what that was saying is, all of you do not have occlusal stability. All of you. All 30 some odd people who are in this room. None of you are occlusally stable. And you know what happened? I go back to my office and what would I find? 98% of my patients are not in CR, right? They all have a hidden slide. And what was I told to do? Take models on every one of those people because they have to be in CR. And I would look at these people, right? And I would see teeth that looked perfectly normal. No wear, no cavities, no problems going on. But I'm told that they had to be in CR. So I start the conversation. Mrs. Jones, we have a problem. <laughs> What's my problem? My problem is, can you feel that big hit and slide that you have? Yeah, that's a problem. Why is it a problem? Well, it's a problem because all of your teeth should meet at once, and when they don't, you're gonna grind your teeth at night, you're gonna break things down, and we're gonna have a problem. But I'm 65 years old and I don't have a problem. <laughs> I understand that, but it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. You're not in CR. Oh my God. Right? Because I was told by some great people everybody had to be in CR. And all those people came in and they had no problems. 
and I was taking lots of models, and I was talking about lots of treatment plans, for what reason? Hmm. Is, is not being in CR the problem? So if I have a bat, and the bat is just sitting there, is that bat a dangerous weapon? Who says yes? I may say yes? When does that bat become a dangerous weapon? When I start swinging and start batting with it, right? <laughs> 